What's up, everybody? Your boy Raj Hollywood. And I'm Trina Trotter. And welcome to the episode of Cravens. And we are here in South Orange, New Jersey at Papillions 25. So, Raj, what are we wearing now? What? I'm wearing that machine. What, we wearing? what about you? <laughs> I'm a shoot, and I got my kicks on. Oh, you already we know. got our kicks on. Oh, we stay fly when we out here. You popping right, right now. That's right. Fly. That's right. Let's go meet the chef. Yeah, let's meet him. My name is Yannick Renieri. We are at Papillon 25, and today we're going to be cooking coco vin. Coco vin is chicken in red wine. Okay, we're going to start with the chicken breast cut into pieces, kind of thicker pieces like this. We flour it first. Four pieces, that's enough for one person. We take some butter, turn on the... We're going to saute the, the chicken there. What happens when everything we know about something changes? We're making history. Right now, we are making history. This is the best American story you never heard. We're building this to outlast ourselves. When we have to make amends and pay respect and give credit where credit is due, what happens? We do it. Uncle Nearest, it's more than whiskey. We're going to brown on the chicken in um, all sides. About two, two minutes, we will pour the wine. You can use any burgundy house wine that you have. Today we're using Opichi. <laughs> and then from there, we will add the mushroom. some garlic, and also some, we're going to add some leeks. Cut it this way, then cut it a little bit. I have some already cut previously. Just dice a little bit. It doesn't matter because coco vin is really uh, a dish that's very, um, it's a home dish. The French dish that's very home. We're going to add a little bit of the demi-glaze. A demi-glaze, you can Google demi-glaze and find out how to make some demi-glaze. For your sauce. We will add some thyme. 
fresh thyme. It can be dry or it can be fresh, it doesn't matter. As you can see, now we will add salt. and pepper. And a little bit of our own ingredients, a mixture of parsley. The pesto of parsley that we make, that makes, uh, give another, a different, Things to our thing. Now, we're going to add a little bit more wine. And we're going to let it simmer. Now we'll see another uh, five minutes. Okay, let's clean up so we can uh, set up our dish on the plate, okay? Let's do this very clean. What happens when everything we know about something changes? I tell people all the time, this is the best American story you never heard. We're out hitting the pavement, talking to restaurants, talking to bars. I don't think of myself as a whiskey salesperson. I want you to know his name. Drink by drink, we're bringing this story to light. When we have to step back through the pages of history. It's so much more than whiskey. It's so much more than a brand. It's a movement. When we have to make amends and pay respect. We're honoring the greatest whiskey maker the world never knew. And it's beautiful and give credit where credit is due. Uncle Nearest is the godfather of Tennessee whiskey, and the world needs to know it. What happens? We do it. Uncle Nearest, it's more than whiskey. Okay, after we clean up, we can serve our dish right now. We're going to serve the coco vin with a risotto that we already prepared and some um, haricot vert, which is like string beans that we already have prepared. Take a spoon and we're going to put some of the sauce. You can see the mushroom, the leeks. Our risotto, we're going to put it in a little ramekin so we can look pretty. And it is a risotto made with, um, with tomatoes and mushroom also. And we're going to just put the string beans, the haricot vert. Right. And to put a little panache, we may use a little parsley for garnish to give some little. And, and then voila. This is our dish, the coco vin. It is a great dish to have, especially on a winter night when it's a little chilly. This is our coco vin. You can come here and try it at 25 Valley Street. And not only we do coco vin, but also you can come here and have a lot of dishes from all over the world at 25 Valley Street at Papillon 25.
craving some chicken. What you think? Yeah, I'm some chicken. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Mmm. I like this cocoa vinegar and bone chicken breast. What you think? Oh, that's good. That ain't no Popeyes. Big craving some cocoa bed, man. I heard that's a pretty good dish. Great dish. All right, let's go for that. We're gonna get one dish, but we're gonna share it. Yeah, no problem. What? What's up? What's up? Don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. <laughs> What happens when everything we know about something changes? We're making history. Right now, we are making history. This is the best American story you never heard. We're building this to outlast ourselves. When we have to make amends and pay respect and give credit where credit is due, what happens? We do it. Uncle Nearest, it's more than whiskey. What's up, everybody? Your boy, Red Charliewood. And I'm Trina Trotter. That's right, and welcome to Cravens. And we are here at East Stars, New Jersey, and we are here at Stage 5 Restaurant. So we're going to go inside and see what they got to offer. But what you wearing, Red? Oh, I'm rocking that uh, fly nerd here, you know what I'm saying? Fly nerd, and we rocking the keeps. All right. Because we, we fly right now. That's right. So now, let's go inside and see what they got to offer. Yep. I'm hungry. I'm starving. Hi, my name is Chef Dom. I'm the executive chef at Stage 5, located in the East Orange, New Jersey, 441 Main Street. I'm going to prepare seafood ziti and champagne chicken. Let's get started. Seafood ziti is made with shrimp, crab, and salmon. It's seasoned with um, Cajun seasoning, lemon pepper, and also we use fresh garlic also. Put a little Cajun seasoning on there. A little lemon pepper seasoning. And some garlic. Before you get started, make sure the pan is hot. And we use olive oil. Time we're going to be preparing the champagne chicken. We use chicken tenders because it's, it's more, it's softer than chicken breast and it don't dry out as much. And we use the same, the same three seasoning, which is 
garlic seasoning, Cajun seasoning, and also some lemon pepper. You start first with the with the salmon because the salmon takes longer to cook. And with the chicken, you're gonna season both sides. Try to get both sides like you just gonna color it, and then once each side is colored like a nice brown color, then you could flip it up, flip it around. And now you're gonna start off with the champagne chicken, do the same thing like saute each side of the chicken. And, and the thing that um, sets us sets us apart from a, a, every other restaurant is we don't cook anything until you order it, so it's like you basically. You're basically having your own cooking show as you come and dine with us. Now you can put in the crab meat and the shrimp. You just turn the chicken over. I got nice, nice color to it. And now with the seafood ziti, now you're ready to put the, you ready to start the Cajun sauce. It's basically, basically three scoops of chicken broth, three and a half scoops. One scoop of marinara sauce, and a scoop of ricotta cheese. like three tablespoons of heavy cream. Let that simmer for like another, I'll say another five minutes. And with the champagne chicken, you're gonna add some chicken broth to it, which is one, like three scoops. And then we use the Andre Champagne. Probably half a cup. And then to bring out the flavor of the wine, you add some sugar, which would be three tablespoons of sugar. Champagne chicken, you just gonna cover it, dome it up so it could cook a little faster. Normally the champagne chicken will, will take like 12 minutes to cook. The seafood ziti will take probably like 10 minutes. Nothing takes more than 15 minutes to cook. That way you don't have to wait as long. Like there's nothing on the menu that takes the, the only thing that takes the longest is probably the salmon filet that we have. It takes like 15 minutes. All right, so the next step will be to add the vegetables in there. Um, we have broccoli, green beans, carrots, onions, and peppers. Put a little bit of that in there. And then next we're gonna add the ziti pasta. We're gonna add some fresh garlic, some minced garlic. And 
Our seafood ziti has three cheese in there. It has American cheese, cheddar cheese, and also some Parmesan cheese. And just mix it in. And just let it cook down for another minute, and then it will be ready to serve. Back to the champagne chicken. As you may see, like the sugar has caramelized the sauce. It's probably got another three minutes to go. What happens when everything we know about something changes? I tell people all the time, this is the best American story you never heard. We're out hitting the pavement, talking to restaurants, talking to bars. I don't think of myself as a whiskey salesperson. I want you to know his name. Drink by drink, we're bringing this story to light. When we have to step back through the pages of history. It's so much more than whiskey. It's so much more than a brand. It's a movement. When we have to make amends and pay respect. We're honoring the greatest whiskey maker the world never knew. And it's beautiful and give credit where credit is due. Uncle Nearest is the godfather of Tennessee whiskey, and the world needs to know it. What happens? We do it. Uncle Nearest, it's more than whiskey. All right, the next step is gonna be the linguine and vegetables for the champagne chicken. A little bit of olive oil. Just let the pan get all nice and hot. Gonna add a little bit of garlic. Add the vegetables. Add a little bit of champagne. And then you're going to add the linguine. And a little bit of Parmesan cheese. And one scoop of chicken broth. To add some flavor, you could put some of the champagne sauce on the linguine. Now we're ready to plate. All right, now we're gonna be plating the champagne chicken. It's served with linguine and vegetables. Champagne chicken right here. Now we're gonna plate the seafood ziti.
know it's made with shrimp, crab, and salmon. One more step, we garnish it with some parsley. And the seafood ziti, we put a little bit of Parmesan cheese on it. And that's it. At stage five, it's straight from the frying pan to your table. Enjoy.